Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the advisor of His Majesty the King for Diplomatic Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, on the occasion of the Diplomatic Day. The advisor extended sincere congratulations to His Majesty the King on the national occasion, which reflects the patriotic role played by the Bahraini diplomacy across various fields and at all international gatherings. He asserted that thanks to His Majesty the King's sound directives and unlimited support, the Bahraini diplomacy will continue enhancing Bahrain's achievements and strengthening its friendship and cooperation with other countries for the best interests of the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Ambassador of the United Kingdom to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Roderick Drummond at Rafah Palace. He highlighted the deep historic ties shared between Bahrain and the UK, centered on a solid foundation of strategic bilateral cooperation. His Royal Highness noted the importance of further strengthening these bilateral relations to the benefit of both countries and their people. He expressed his appreciation for the cooperation between Bahrain and the United Kingdom, working together towards combating COVID-19 and facilitating the provision of vaccines within the kingdom, which will contribute to safeguarding the health of all. Regional and international issues of common interest were also discussed. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the U.S. Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Michael Gilday, and his accompanying delegation at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strong historic ties between Bahrain and the United States, particularly in the military and defense fields. He stressed the importance of further strengthening these ties, as well as enhancing coordination across various fields. His Royal Highness welcomed Admiral Gilday and his accompanying delegation and underscored the role played by the United States in maintaining regional security and stability. Regional and international issues of common interest were also discussed. The BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Naimi, was also present. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the Chief of Naval Operations of the U.S., Admiral Mike Gilday, and his accompanying delegation. The Defense Affairs Minister, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Naimi, and the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Dhab bin Sagar Naimi, were present. The two sides reviewed the Bahrain-U.S. joint military cooperation. The BDF Commander-in-Chief lauded the depth of relations between the two countries. Following the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rasha bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inspected the new building at the Bahrain International Airport. Upon arrival, the minister was received by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Engineer Kamal Ahmed Muhammad, in the presence of the Chief of Public Security and a number of officials. The minister was briefed on the logistics preparations and security procedures, as well as the latest technologies used in providing the customs and security services for travelers. The minister affirmed that the expansion project affirms the development march witnessed during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and affirmed that these procedures will contribute to facilitating the traveling and tourism in the kingdom. The minister was also briefed on the security system, in which it will ensure the security and safety for the travelers. 
The minister was then briefed about the airport police directorate's modern technology that will achieve liquidity in the movement of passengers, provide the necessary facilities, and provide the latest devices in the field of security inspection, as well as the availability of advanced operations room that uses smart systems. The minister was informed of the readiness of airport passports, which will operate through 44 cabins for arrivals and departures, including cabins equipped for people with special needs, in addition to 22 electronic gates operating with a fingerprint and face print system, in addition to six cabins in the special area to complete the arrival procedures for travelers who hold visas for the, from the Labor Market Regulatory Authority. The minister then followed on the preparations of Customs Affairs to provide integrated customs services using modern technologies, where the Customs Affairs has created an X-ray control unit to analyze images, a mobile team specialized in surveillance operations, a room to manage customs operations through surveillance cameras, as well as planning to create an electronic application to clear reservations for incoming travelers. In accordance with the directives of the Cabinet on the 11th of January, the Ministries of Interior and Foreign Affairs followed up on the cases of the Bahrain fishermen who have been taken into custody by Qatari authorities in order to ensure their swift release and return. The Ministry of Interior said that it received a notification from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs which stated that the fishermen have been released following their detention on the 8th of January while fishing. The released fishermen were Samil Haddad, Mohammed Dosri, along with Habib Abbas, who was detained on the 3rd of December, but their boats, which number up to 50, remain in custody. The Bahraini embassy at Oman was notified of the fishermen's arrival, after which the Ministry of Interior contacted them to follow up on the matter, take their statements, and begin the relevant legal procedures. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, inaugurated the new branch of Family Microfinance House, formerly known as Al Osra Bank. The new branch aims to serve families and business people, as well as support low income families, senior citizens, housewives, and job seekers. The Minister affirmed that this project developed tremendously over the past 10 years and provided over 14 million Bahraini dinars of financing. He added that it contributed to creating job opportunities and provided support to businesses through financial services. Bahrain celebrates today the Diplomatic Day, which was allocated by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in appreciation to the efforts of the Diplomatic Corps affiliates. More on this report. Moderation and balance have been the major pillars of Bahrain's diplomacy for over 50 years. The diplomacy has recorded Bahrain's national progress based on lofty principles and high values that constituted the most important factor in consolidating the kingdom's international relations. It also highlighted the comprehensive prosperity across all areas in the kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The approach of Bahraini diplomacy is to highlight the kingdom's noble values of tolerance, coexistence, fraternity, mutual respect and adherence to international charters and laws, and such values contribute to strengthening security, peace and global stability. His Majesty the King dedicated this day in appreciation of the efforts of all diplomats and staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the efforts being exerted by the minister and senior officials in widening cooperation with other countries and in reinforcing Bahrain's role and stances on the various Arab, regional and international levels. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,954, with 240 recoveries and 275 registered new cases. 142 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 130 are contacts of active cases, and 3 are travel-related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. 